Hi, I'm Ken Blaster, and welcome to PSN, Pembroke's new weekly sports show. This week in Coach's Corner, we're talking with Brandon Hall and the newly formed JV golf team. Athletic Director Dan DePsista will give us an update on Captain's Council, and we will have our weekly sports update for all of our teams and any school news as well. First, let's go to Shane Gallagher and the Coach's Corner. Uh, I'm Shane Gallagher, and uh, we're with the JV golf coach today, Brandon Hall. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, this is the first year with the PHS, that PHS has golf. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about it? Sure. Uh, the JV golf program kind of started about uh, seven or eight years ago. Um, the idea was that we would have a practice squad practicing while the varsity was playing. Um, and it's tough for one person to you know, watch 16 players out on a golf course because of the size of the course. So uh, I had volunteered uh, seven or eight years ago with Coach Consolati. I would go out the practice squad, he would go out the varsity team, and when the varsity team would travel, I'd stay back so these guys could develop. And uh, we've been pushing for a, vars a JV program for uh, quite a few years now, and uh, school committee and uh, Mr. Batista were generous enough to uh, make that dream a reality. That's really good. I was just determined who plays on the varsity and the JV? Uh, usually it's based on score and performance and practice. Um, sometimes it's matchups, uh, you know, for the team that we're facing. Um, sometimes it's a uh, style of game that a player might have, might fit a course really well. If, a, you know, someone's kind of a, not, not really that long of a hitter and we're playing on a short course or a tight course, you might go with one guy over another. Um, you know, stuff like that. Uh, a lot of times it's performance based though, and golf's kind of a neat sport in that way where you actually get a score and that's how well you did and there's not a lot of uh, interpretation that has to be done in another sport like maybe uh, like a hockey or football. Yeah. What advantages do you see with having the JV golf? Uh, it's definitely going to help us develop our program. Uh, we have 18 players this year on the whole team uh, between JV and varsity. Uh, it's going to give us a good opportunity to give more kids a chance to play golf competitively. Uh, it's only going to help us in the long run. Does the team practice every day with the varsity? We do. Uh, whenever the varsity and JV are practicing together, like yesterday on Monday, we practice both teams together. Uh, today we have a JV match, our first one against Duxbury. The varsity team is away, so we usually try and do the matches, uh, um, you know, one's home and one's away at the same time. Um, but if the varsity team is home and that JV can't get a match, we'll practice at the time of the match. Do a lot of schools have JV squads? I'd say in the Patriot League about half the schools do. You know, Hanover does, Duxbury does. Um, a couple of the other schools, uh, I believe Whitman Hanson does, uh, you know, so it's, it's going to be pretty competitive golf for us, and we get to play on some great courses, too. If you and head coach Paul Consolati would match up together, who do you think would win? Uh, boy, that's a tough one. Uh, coach Consolati's a pretty good golfer. Um, he's been playing a lot longer than I have. Uh, if it was a height contest, I'm pretty sure I would win. Uh, but he's, he's a longer hitter than I am, and, uh, and actually he's a much better putter, so I, I, would, give, I would give it to him. Uh, I'd give him a run for his money, I think, if he gave me a couple of strokes, though. All right. Well, that's all we got. I'm Shane Gallagher, and this is uh, Brandon, Brandon Hall. Hall. And wrap up. I'm here in the AD corner, and I'm Zach Schaefer, and this is uh, Athletic Director Dana Batista. We're speaking in the AD corner this week uh, about today's Captain's Council. Uh, can you tell us a little about the Captain's Council? Sure. Uh, Captain's Council developed uh, two years ago when I took over. Uh, it's something I had seen a lot of schools do and saw that we didn't have it. So I thought and kind of, you know, reached out to a bunch of other different schools, what their model was, and kind of modeled it after that. But it was something that we felt that was necessary here to develop leaders and leadership um, within our sports. Um, so here we are now. We're two years into it, and, and it's going pretty well right now. And how important do you think it is for high school to have the captain's council? I think it's extremely important. I think it's uh, a necessary part of the athletics, but it's also a necessary part of the school. Um, you know, the students are here are student athletes, but also trying to develop leaders. So that's one of the big things for us coming up in the, over the next six months is develop leadership, but teach our athletes and, our, and anybody who's involved in it, including the captains, that, you know, you're going out to have fun, you have a good time, and it's all about uh, academics first. And, and represent your school the proper way. Thanks. And uh, what are some of the things the captains on the captain council have done last year? Sure. In the last, actually, the last two years, two, two years ago, we had a huge food drive uh, right before Christmas. Um, 
we went out and the hockey team to help and we, we got all, all the athletes involved. Um, we raised about two tons worth of food and gave it to the uh, Pembroke Food Pantry. Uh, last year we worked with the Leukemia Foundation, uh, raised over $8,000 and gave it to them. Uh, this year, what's on tap? Um, don't know yet. We're going to meet with the Captain's Council next week and we're going to come up with some creative ideas, but we'll be reaching out to the community and looking to help there. Is there anything new for the Captain's Council? Um, you know, right now I would say the biggest thing we're going to try to work on is a leadership summit. So the leadership summit would be all the captains in the school, plus uh, members of the school council, uh, marching band, anybody who's a leader among that, we can reach out and have a uh, kind of like a one-day summit. Um, and talk about leadership and bring those ideas back to the school. Sounds good. Thank you. Excellent. This is Zach Schaefer signing off from the AD's Corner. Hi, I'm Zach Schaefer, and I'm here with the weekly sports update, September 16th through the 21st. I'm here with Corey Brain. How's it going, Zach? I'm good. Corey, how are you? Good. Uh, I'm going to start off with the field hockey. The Lady Titans enter the week with a 3-0 record with two huge games on deck. Monday, the Lady Titans travel down the road to visit the Lakers from Soda Lake for a 3:30 contest. No matter what the records are between the schools, it's always a great game. Wednesday, the Titans are on the road again in a key battle with Hanover. Both teams are looking to capture the Patriot League title this year, and it'll be the first time they meet. Friday, the game against Hingham was moved to October 10th. Um, I'm going to start with girls soccer. The girls soccer team starts their path for the Patriot League title this week with two key division games. Monday, the Lady Titans travel to Post South in a non-league showdown with the Panthers at 3.30. Tuesday, the Sachems from Millborough visit PHS for a 3.30 game. Thursday, the Titans host North Quincy at 4. Both these games are Fisher Division opponents and will be key for Pembroke victories. In golf news, the golf team hits the links three times this week for key league matchups. Monday, the Titans will be looking to avenge an early season loss to Nosset with a 4.30 match on the Cape. The Titans are right back in action on Tuesday with the key contest with North Quincy at 4. The Titans are back on their home course hosting the Presidents for a 4 o'clock contest. Uh, we have cross country. The runners hit the road on Wednesday to take Hanover at Duxbury. The boys enter the contest at 2-0 and are looking to increase their record against a very good Hanover team. The girls who Coach Z says are getting better each day take on Hanover. This could be a key match in the search for the Patriot League title. In boys soccer news, boys soccer opens up this week at home in a, on Monday in a non-league battle against Plymouth South at 3.30. The battle for league supremacy starts up Tuesday with the Titans traveling to Middleborough at 3.30. Thursday, the Titans hit the road again, this time at North Quincy, to take on the Red Raiders at 4 o'clock. Both these games are fishing division contests and could prove big for the Patriots' league title. In football news, the football team returns to the gridiron Friday at 4 for a clash with non-league rival Hall Rams. Two years ago, the two teams met in the first round of the playoffs with the Tigers knocking out the Titans. Last year, the Titans traveled to all Rams and lost a tough battle. Friday's contest should be key for this year's upcoming playoffs. That's it, football news. I'm Corey Grant. I'm Zach Schaefer. Now we're going to send it over to Abby Burgess for your volleyball and school update. Thanks, Zach. And in volleyball news, the Lady Titans are traveling to North Quincy on Monday to take on the Red Raiders in what should be a key contest for the Patriot League title. Last year, the Titans beat the NQ at PHS to win the Patriot League. The Lady Titans close out the week with two home games, Wednesday versus Silver Lake and Friday versus Whitman Hansen. Just a quick reminder that JV and freshmen both play first, which are followed by the varsity. In other Titan news, do you like what you see? Want to be part of PSN? See Mr. Batista. We are looking for co-hosts and film crew. Also, it is important to remember that schedules and games can change daily. You can follow Mr. Batista on Twitter at PEM Athletics or go to the Pembroke School website and click on Athletics. Why are some games at 4 and others at 3.30? When Quincy, North Quincy, and Duxbury, and Hingham as well, play at PHS, the games are at 4 o'clock. Both Quincy's are because of the travel and Duxbury and Hingham get out of school later. When the Titans hit the road, the start time are, except for Duxbury, we start the games at 345. Are you confused about what league Pembroke is in? The Titans are in the Patriot League that is divided into two divisions, Keenan and Fisher. Keenan consists of Duxbury, Whitman Hanson, Silver Lake, Hingham, and Quincy. The Fisher division consists of Pembroke, Situate, Hanover, Middleborough, and North Quincy. And that's it. Thanks for watching with Abby Burgess and PSN.